This is from 2013. And look at all the comments. Five years later, I'm back to this video. I kind of want to see like how much have things changed since back then. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. You know, there are times when I despair. There really are. Oh, Today's going to be one of those times, I think, simply because I feel this subject's going to come up again in a big way as a result of the release of Aliens Colonial Marines, which is getting absolutely pasted. I do mean pasted in a way I've uh -huh. never seen before by the gaming press. For a major AAA release, it is getting hammered into the ground. I am utterly shocked. I am really, really Yeah, happy. you're I, goddamn I right. I expect it to maybe be sort of average and people say, oh, it's okay, but, you know, it doesn't really live up to this the license. Oh, no. I mean, this thing happening. is getting destroyed. Mm -hmm. So I feel that we need to bring up this topic again. And that's the topic of pre-orders. So last night, I went on Top Sellers. You know what I found? Aliens Colonial Marines. This was before it came out. It was a top seller on Steam. Wait, people, the game was a top seller, and it wasn't even out yet. Oh my god. So people were buying this thing, and it, of course they were doing it sight unseen, there was no demo, and they, they were weren't saving any it. money on it, just... and they were getting Fuck what it. exactly? Well, in the case of Steam, they were getting something Gotta called the it. Sharp Stick. Which was a gun. Yeah? yeah. A slightly different gun. It fired, apparently, sonic harpoon artillery remote projectiles. So, little explosive tip darts. Wow. And that was pretty much it. So, apparently that was the incentive. And it was enough for people to throw a lot of money down on this thing. Now, you couldn't preload this game. Even if you could, it would have been a fairly weird thing to do. Considering, it, well, it's not exactly a big download. It's about six gigabytes, so it's not like you're going to have to download a Blu-ray's worth of content Nowadays, here. Nowadays, you want to download a game. See, like, the thing is that whenever you download a game, there's like a 70 gigabyte download because 30 gigs are for the game and the other 40 gigs are for the root kit that China is installing onto your computer to fucking be able to pull up your PC whenever they invade the United States. This is, of course, just one example. And how many examples do we have to go through True. and look at pre-order bonuses and say, oh, well, this is not particularly great. This is not much yeah. of an incentive for me to throw down money. What a pre-order essentially is, especially if you're doing it on uh -huh. Steam, is you throwing down money, sight unseen, and getting very little benefit for it. And very if you little benefit for it, that's right. Yeah, buying it sight unseen. You do that. The what chance. What would Total Biscuit say about Diablo Immortal? I really wish we could have seen that fucking video. I I'm gonna be honest. Like he would be, he's he would rip it apart. Yeah, that would have been holy fuck. Times are changing? Yeah. He would have blown up? Yeah. This is you're not going to be able to get a refund if it turns out the game is a complete stinker. Now bear in mind that Steam will cancel pre-orders, prior of course to the release of the game. What they won't do is give you a refund after the game actually comes out, because it's automatically put on to your actual account itself. Yeah, of course. That's much more difficult. Generally speaking, Steam will do one for you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They'll give you one refund, and then after that, it becomes very, very difficult to get refunds from Steam for games that you've purchased, whether it just be right there on the day as it's come out, or whether it's pre-ordered and then converted into a purchase after your money has actually been taken. Yep. Now, this wouldn't be Aware, so much- times are changing for the worse. What I love about this video is the fact that you can look at so many parts of it and think to yourself, man, that part happened, that part happened, etc. ...of a problem if there weren't so many games coming out yep. that have review embargoes that hold all of the criticism, the critique, and the reviews and analysis oh, yeah. until either the day the game comes out or the day before. Yep. There's a lot of this going on. Aliens Colonial Marines is the latest example of that happening. And as a direct result... A lot of people pre-ordered it on Steam before the reviews went up, mm -hmm. and now a lot of people have Aliens Colonial Marines, which the critics are saying pretty much across the board, with a couple of exceptions, this game is dreadful. It turns but it out doesn't that it doesn't matter because they've already got your fucking money.
Aliens Colonial Marines may have been some kind of gigantic bait and switch, yep. according to people like Jim. And St there's also a lot of other people you've got to keep in mind. There's a lot of people who will play the game and the game will be bad and they won't refund it. That's a big factor. Is it you, they won't refund the game. They'll say like, oh, yeah, this game, it, it sucks. And they're just like not going to play it again. Sterling, who yep. claims that the demo that the press got to play was actually not part of the game at all. Like, it is not representative of the game because they made something completely different and a lot better solely to impress the actual media themselves, which... Isn't gaming great? They, they made, like, a, a completely separate game for the game developers to play? Oh, my God. Which, to me, boggles my mind, and as far as I'm oh concerned, should be downright God. illegal. And that's a gigantic example of false advertising and bait-and-switch tactics, yep. if I ever saw it. But of course, this wouldn't be the only game that's had pre-order bonuses and people have actually purchased. I mean, Duke Nukem Forever is another prime example. This is something that got pre-ordered on Steam to the point where it ended up being in the top sellers list. Yep. There were a couple of silly little bonuses you could get, and then, of course, it comes out and it ends up being dreadful. Of course. And there are plenty more games that have done exactly that. That's what they Tomb Raider, did. for yep. instance. That is currently available to pre-order on Steam. Now, gotta say, this is of course a much better deal than a lot of the other pre-orders because it comes with various benefits, like it's 10% off, for instance, so you save five bucks, can't really argue with that, right? You've got pre-purchase rewards that are unlocked as more people pre-purchase. Free copy of Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light. Well, that's a game that you could have gotten for three dollars on about every Steam sale ever, but yep. it's still a good game. You know, Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light is a genuinely good game. Number two. The Challenge Tomb DLC for Tomb Raider, an exclusive tomb for Lara to raid. Now, as far as I can tell, it would seem that this is a piece of release DLC. So it looks like someone actually made a level within the game that is only unlocked if they reached a certain level of pre-orders. Well, that's a bit of BS, isn't it? Why don't you just add the content to the game in the first place and then you have a more full game experience? Then reward number three. The Endurance DLC pack for Tomb Raider, which we don't know a damn thing about. It says final details will be revealed on January 2013. That has now passed. We don't know what that is. So we have no idea if that's something that's going to be given to you on day one. It's going to be day one DLC, which is obviously a little bit of the game kind of sliced off in order to incentivize you to buy the game that you would have. Are they doing, uh, did the game still do day one DLC? Yeah, did the game still do day, day one DLC? gotten anyway yep. or I, I don't care. it's a piece of dlc that wrath. you'll be getting later on but of course we don't know we don't well, even know I'm what we're not gonna play wrath wrath is fucking dead no wrath endurance oh, dlc wrath. Fact actually is, what the fuck is wrath? because they didn't bother it's to fun, tell man. us i you might look into it. it so that okay. is a gigantic amount of sight unseen nonsense that you're getting here yeah. and yet people pre-ordered it pretty hardcore i might add yesterday it was in the top 10 on the steam sellers list unbelievable this is a game that's coming out in March, and yet it was in the top 10. Like, it was above games like Antichamber, a game that's had universal acclaim, and there's tons of stuff on YouTube that allows you to figure is out whether or not good? it's actually it's worth like getting. Valheim? I mean, it was above Far okay. Cry 3, yeah. a game which, once again, received... Okay, uh, that's interesting. ...universal acclaim. It okay, even ended up above stuff like Skyrim and Black Ops for a while. Insane, really, when you think yep. about it. And yet, there it was. People were enticed by this whole tiered reward system that they've got going on here. It's like, oh, I'm going to encourage my friends to pre-order because I want the reward tier to go up to the next level so I get more stuff in this game that I haven't played and have absolutely no idea as to whether or not it's going to be any good. Are you seeing how this could be harmful? Yeah, that's Please the way Please tell me that you works. are. Because I like to have faith in my subscribers, right? I like to think that you're a smart bunch and that the people shitting up the comments section are just the vocal minority uh -huh. and I shouldn't really pay too much attention to them. It's like a couple of hundred people out of 950,000 subscribers, right? There's bad apples in every barrel. But I am really hoping that you guys see where the problem is here. Now, pre-order bonuses, I've railed against for a long time. I think that they're just going to keep doing it. I don't think that the games are ever going to stop getting rid of pre-orders. I think pre-orders are here to stay in the worst possible way. And I don't think they're good for games, but it's funny for me to see this, that this shit came out nine years ago. People still think that. Time, but you We're know why pre-order yeah. bonuses exist? Because people keep pre-ordering video mm -hmm. games and pre-order bonuses actually work. They entice you into the game itself. I think the best part about this is that people now have gotten dumber. Like whenever this video came out, it was really popular. And now people are proud of the fact that they're pre-order Andes. 
They're like, yeah, I pre-ordered the game. What's wrong with that? Of course I pre-ordered. Absolutely. Jesus they start to yep. get you invested in purchasing the title. This is the same reason why places like GameStop charge $5 for you to pre-order. Now, you can get that back. I mean, it's pretty easy. You just say, oh, I don't want to buy the pre-order anymore. Oh, hell, yeah. you just don't buy it at all. And then the money stays on your account and you can buy something else. So it's like, oh, well, there's no risk in that. Well, yes and no. I mean, why do you think they do this in the first place? It's because it gets you invested in the game. You've already put money down. That means the money you're going to pay on launch day, that's slightly less. You've set up a plan. Yeah. This is, uh, I'm actually parroting the guy from that dice talk. Jesse Shell stated that you get this plan in your mind when it comes to purchase, and yeah. deviating from that plan isn't something you want to do. That's how it and works. Of when course. you put money down, and this, this is my speculation, I'm pretty sure it's not his, but the idea is pretty much the same thing. When you put money down, that's a part of your plan. That's a stepping stone towards buying the title. So you become more committed to buying it. Mm -hmm. You become more likely to actually pick it up in the first place. Even though you know that you haven't really invested anything, you've still put some money down. It's a little bit easier. It's a little bit cheaper on launch day for you, even yeah, though it's sure. the same price anyway. Sure. You just happen to have split some of the cost. So that's why GameStop does it, because they realize it's an mm -hmm. effective tactic to make people pre-order and actually convert that pre-order into a, a real sale. And when it comes to Steam, Jesus, once the game's out, what I see fucking game is that? Oh my god. What happened? Delete the VOD! Oh my god. What is this? You're done. Jesus. You don't get the chance to refund careful, that. Man. It You're goes onto your account. It sits there and then you have to contact Steam support, and maybe they give you the money back, but they probably won't. Uh -huh. And for what? What did you gain? A skin pack? Some free game that you could have picked up for $3 on 25 different Steam sales in the past? Some dumb rifle? Yeah. You're throwing 50 to 60 bucks at a title you know nothing about except for carefully crafted marketing material. That's what people have done for years now. Yeah, that's what people have done. They have literally done that for years, and they don't even care. Now people are even proud of it. They're like, yeah, like people are proud of being whales in video games now. This is totally normal. How many times do people have to get burned by this? You remember Dead Island? Oh, that's a great example. Yeah. Dead Island, which at least some people like, don't get me wrong, was not in the same mm -hmm. ballpark of quality as its trailer. And that marketing trailer was absolute genius. Everyone remembers yep. that. It was one of the best trailers I've ever seen. Got people seriously hyped for the game. It wasn't even in the same solar system of quality as that. And yet people pre-ordered it anyway because, hey, that trailer really impressed me. That's you what they do. Yes, people buy games that they've never played before. They pre-order them because they can, and they get a bonus for doing it. Nukem Forever. That's Good what lord. And the number of pre-order bonuses available there, including yeah. a big head mode. Totally How normal. is that a pre-order bonus? Like, that's something you could hack in the .ini files. Not only that, but that's basically some dumb Easter egg. I mean, it's a cheat. It's arguably a bug. I mean, why the hell would you yep. pay for a bug? That's beyond ridiculous. You got a trucker hat if you pre-ordered it at bloody Walmart. Oh yeah, yeah, physical mm -hmm. piece of pre-order tat. I mean, this is the stuff that we actively avoid getting at trade shows because it bogs you down and it's absolute nonsense. T-shirts, do you really need gaming t-shirts in your wardrobe desperately to the point where you're willing to risk 60 bucks on something that might suck? Because yes, I yes, absolutely people are. Absolutely, and I think that has only become more common. Especially if it's like limited edition. If there's like a special thing about the t-shirt, people will buy it like fucking crazy. I can tell you, you can get a lot of pretty good t-shirts for 60 bucks. And the physical tat's just one aspect of it. The most harmful thing is the fact that pre-order bonuses and the fact mm -hmm. that people are willing to actually pre-order to begin with have encouraged horrible development practices over the course of the years. Now, I'm talking about the notion of taking content that was intended for the game and splitting it off as a pre-order bonus. I'm yep. talking about wasting the time of developers to create specific content for different retailers. I'm talking about the notion that when you buy the game, you can't ever have the complete experience because you didn't buy it from seven major retailers at once, right? I mean, bloody Dishonored was really bad in this regard. No, don't get me wrong. Not every pre-order bonus. I love seeing this, man. This is so fucking funny to me because it's only gotten worse. 
that's the actually best takes away it. development time. Yeah, it's only gotten worse. This is often stuff that's developed by the art department in mm -hmm. the months leading up to the launch of the game when the art assets are pretty much complete and they have nothing better to do with their time because they're in crunch and they're finishing content, but all the art stuff's already done. They're doing yeah. bug testing. It's nothing that the art department can really help with. I mean, they're not just going to put down their whack on yeah. tablet and then go and debug the game. That's not Nine their speciality. Years old. So yeah, they can work on stuff like that. Holy That's fine. Shit. No big deal. But a lot of this stuff does, in fact, take away from the development Man. time. And you should never be splitting off parts of the game prior to release in order to incentivize purchase or pre-purchase from various different places. I've told you about how Day One DLC is essentially one of the absolute worst mm -hmm. things to ever happen to the games industry. Pre-order bonus... See... It was the worst thing to ever happen to the games industry at that point. Total Biscuit didn't see Diablo Immortal. Okay? Yeah, yeah. See, this was, you gotta keep that in mind. This is uh, pretty much on that level. And yet they keep doing it because it works. Because people mm -hmm. will willingly pre-order the game. Yep. Now, I suppose it's healthy for the industry, at least in the short term. It's like, hey, great. We've got some money in the bank prior to this game even coming out. This is good. We can show our investors pre-order figures. We can show them actual guaranteed income. This is awesome for us. But it's terrible for the consumer. It's absolutely dreadful. It also encourages really yeah. bad review practices. Incredibly bad. And the reason is that if you happen to decide, hey, I'm going to release this game, and I'm going to rely on my marketing material. I'm not going to put out a demo. No. I'm going to put out some really good trailers. Yeah. But in reality, this game actually stinks, right? It's in my best interests not to allow the press to actually put out anything on it until the game comes out. This practice Didn't this exact thing happen with Cyberpunk last year? Yeah, this exact thing happened with Cyberpunk. That is so fucking funny. This has been going wow. on in the games industry for a while. It's been going on in the movie industry for a while. There's a reason why a lot of films don't get pre-screenings. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest reasons is they know the film sucks and they don't want people to know about that prior to it coming out. That maximizes their potential sales, or more accurately, it maximizes their potential suckers. The more people pre-order games, the more of these embargoes we're going to be seeing. Review embargoes are pretty common. They apply to most games. Now, the officially yeah, stated- now they're now it's just the norm. Like, as far as I know, they're all pretty much the same. Can you get Ted Cruz on board? No, I don't think that there is... I actually don't think that there is a legal ground to ban pre-ordering. I, I, I don't think so. I think that pre-ordering... This is... There are some things out there that people just do dumb stuff, and it's their fault. It, this is not a problem to be solved by government. You know? reason for this, which is not untrue, is that they need an embargo in order to give all reviewers and critics and it's everybody a, a fair tech, chance yeah. to have a go at the game and actually write their reviews. There are some people like myself, we do first impressions. It doesn't take me an awful lot of time compared to someone who beats the game and then writes a review. Well, That's why I never call my stuff reviews, right? It doesn't deserve that title. But everyone else who's doing reviews... That's very smart. Man, it would be too bad if somebody who maybe did write a review, played an MMO for three hours, and then wrote a review on how good it is or not. Jeez. That would be really bad if that happened, wouldn't it? Holy shit. ...has to play through the Man. game, especially if it's something big like an RPG. It takes a long time to actually get through that. So that's why me. review embargoes exist. However, they can also be abused. Yeah, of course. They can restrict the actual coverage of the game mm -hmm. all the way up until the release. And if you break that embargo, you get blacklisted. You don't get any more copies. You don't get access to betas. You don't get right. access to press events where you yep. can actually preview the game and get the kind of material that you need in order and to... people worry about this even if you say bad things about the game. That's why it, it, there's like this weird thing where the game reviewers keep giving positive reviews to games even though the games aren't that great so they can continue getting more early access content. That's what good happens. articles and good videos. It sucks. Let's just say that breaking review embargo is something you will only really do once, because once the word gets around, mm -hmm. nobody is going to talk to you anymore. No more PR agencies will actually deal with you.
So Which for I the most think is fair. I mean, like obviously it's their right to have an embargo. It, it's about the intent behind it that's bad. But publishers have like, uh, like for example, um, Elden Ring had an embargo. Like they gave me the full the full game early before the game came out, and I just didn't talk about it or make any content about it or anything like that. Like I didn't play it even. Uh, but yeah, I, I had it whenever I, I did that demo thing. Of gaming media by the balls. So everybody respect. doesn't. They can't risk breaking embargo because it's too damaging for their business. And by the time those reviews actually come out, game's top seller on Steam. I mean, hell, it was top seller on Steam yeah. yesterday and the game wasn't even out yet. It, it boggles my mind. It really does. It blows me away. There's good news yep. and there's bad news. The bad news is this is our fault for being stupid enough to continue to pre-order these titles. when there is That's what I think, too. I, I don't think this is like the loot boxes. Like, I think the loot boxes, you can say that shit is gambling and it's misleading and it's, a, it's like a marketed towards kids. A hundred fucking percent. But pre-ordering video games is not something that I support legislation against. You know, like, I don't think it should be against the law to pre-order a video game. However, I think people are dumb if they do it. Unless you're a streamer or it's some like unique circumstance, I, I think it's dumb. No benefit to it whatsoever. It's not even a case of it being no benefit. It's actively damaging the games industry. It's not just like, oh, right, okay, I took a hit for 60 bucks. No, yeah. you're encouraging terrible business practice. You need to stop it. You really, really do. The good news... The worst part about this is that like all of these videos... Like, this video right here has 2 million views. 2 million fucking views. And it didn't do fuck all. Because there's plenty of people out there that are like, Well, you know, I mean, that's true most of the time. But I really have a good feeling about this one. I really think this one's going to be good. I, I, I like it. It's entirely within our hands. Yeah. We actually have the opportunity to derail this entire business practice. And you know what we need to do? Learn a bit of patience. It really is that simple. Learn a bit of patience. Those of you sensible enough to that's be patient not and not pre-order Aliens Colonial yep, Marines now happen. have at your disposal a wealth of reviews. The vast majority of them say this game is a stinker and you mm -hmm. should not be dropping 50, 60 bucks on it. And that's good. You were patient. And as a result, you were rewarded. Everything Imagine is that. in your favor. If the game had turned out to be good, you could have gone right under Steam and just bought it right there. Oh, so you miss out on a skin pack or the sharp rifle. Who bloody cares? These things are me- Everybody cares. The cosmetics? Who bloody cares? We just saw who cared. Yeah, you want to see who cares? They're right here, guys. These are all the people that care. That's what it is. Yeah, it's FOMO. Like, you don't want to be the only person in your group of friends that doesn't have the special mount. Who wants to not have the special mount? Meaningless. Don't be suckered in. In the case of Tomb Raider, oh, well, I miss out on a free copy of Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light yeah. that I can play right now. Let's be honest here. If you actually wanted to play Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light, you would mm -hmm. have bought it anyway. I mean, for God's sake, it's been part of so many Steam sales. That game has been out for years. This is not a big bonus to you. If you intended to play it, rather than just add it to your Steam shelf and say, hey, look, I've got an extra game which I'm never going to play, you would have already played it. Yeah. Tomb Raider might be great. I mean, all signs are pointing to it being pretty good, right? But you don't know that yet. So why would you buy it? I mean, it's just insane. Do you do this with anything else in your life, or is it just games? If it's just games, then take a good hard look at your consumer practices take a good this is exactly what mcconnell said i'm gonna be honest this is exactly what he said yep and yep. nine years later nine years later they're right there just the same wow i don't understand a problem with pre-ordering latest wow expansion I mean, here's the thing, is like, if you want to pre-order so you can play the game early, I'm not going to tell people what they should and should, what they can and can't do with their money, right? What I will say is that I do think that pre-ordering, there is no benefit for the consumer with pre-ordering. Like, there is no intrinsic value that you gain as a consumer for pre-ordering. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, that, that's really what it is.
hard look at what you do as a consumer mm -hmm. and think, is this screwing me? Because the chances are it is. Now, yeah. some people are going to come back and say, well, I would have bought it anyway. And there's a there big problem, are. isn't it? Because with Aliens Colonial Marines, you've got a game that a lot of people would have bought anyway because it's an Aliens game. They are loyal to the franchise. They are loyal like to the, the brand. That's like the WoW players. That's WoW players and right that's there. that's terrible. The reason it's terrible is because these are the guys that go into full-on Stockholm Syndrome cognitive dissonance fanboy mode as soon as anyone criticizes this game. Here's what's going to happen. The people that pre-ordered this game are going to be split into one of two camps. There's going to be the guys that are like, I got burned hard. And then there are going to be the other guys who say, no, 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 this game's great. This game is incredible. No, guys, you're really missing out. And then actually get super defensive of the game. Why would they get super defensive of it? Because they drop money on it, and they can't be wrong. No, yeah, they don't this want to look stupid. This is why you have this situation. This is why you have bad games come out. I mean, the War Z is just... No, imagine being being roasted, and you don't even know you get roasted until nine years in the future. That's where we're at. The biggest possible example of that. You have this group of people that are neurotic for the War Z. Mm -hmm. They have Stockholm Syndrome. They are literally grateful to Hammer Point for screwing them. They have convinced yep. themselves that because they would never make a bad decision, because that reflects badly on them, it right? makes them look They stupid. have convinced themselves that this is a good game, even though all signs... I should go and... Speaking of this, I should go and look at the Diablo Immortal subreddit after this. Point to it not Be being curious. a good game. And they will actively attack anyone that says otherwise. Yep. That is beyond consumer irresponsibility going into the realms of crazy, going into the mm -hmm. realms of actively working against other consumers. Like, basically being, I wouldn't even say a paid shill, because they actually paid for the privilege of being a shill. Incredible. Are you... They are a paid shill, but they paid to be a shill. Oh, man. That is sad out of your minds why would you do that and yet it will happen yep. it will happen with aliens colonial marines it happened with war z it happened with duke nukem forever it will continue to happen with people that drop money on games prior to it being released and then convince themselves that actually no they didn't buy a bad game because they would never do that because of course they're totally smart would never be suckered in I and mean, what's the worst thing God, about dude i cannot wait to fucking look at the diablo immortal shit Oh my god, being sucked in Holy to a pre-order for a game that's terrible, right? Well, the worst thing is having to admit that you were the sucker. Nobody likes to think they're suckers. Nobody. And as a no, result... No, nobody... Yeah, that's the thing. They're like, no, no, no. I, I invested $50,000 into the game. No, I, I... Yeah, I've invested... I've invested money in the games before. I, yeah, I invest money in the games. They'll make up excuses. It's totally normal. It is a nasty cycle. Yeah, totally normal. Stop being involved in it, please. Think very, very hard before you pre-order a game. Think, well, would I have bought this anyway? Am I such a huge fan of the series that even if 20 reviews from people that I trusted came out and said, this is dreadful, even if my friends who I trust came and said to me, this is dreadful, even under those circumstances, I still would have bought the game and I still would have played it anyway. If you are in that situation, all right, pre-order. Fine. If you have even the slightest doubt, for the love of God, wait. Please wait. So, wait a minute. So, Total Biscuit says it's okay. He says it's okay, guys. It's all right. Everybody, everybody, come on. Let's get, get your money. Get your money. Let's go quickly. You are doing more damage we know to it's yourself gonna be good, and to guys. the industry than you can possibly realize. We as consumers have the ability to stop this bullshit oh for God. good. And Just we're the only ones yeah. who can do that. Publishers aren't going to do it. Yeah. Devs aren't going to do it. It's up to you. Will you be part of that solution? Will you help mm -hmm. fix this? Or will you continue to be part of the problem? I guess that's up to you. My name is Total Biscuit, and I'll see you next time. I have to show you guys something. I do, and I feel bad for doing this, but I'm going to have to do it. It's, it's so sad because there are people out there that still believe that they can fight the good fight. And there's this guy in here. He's very angry about me. He says, after Immortal, 
After Immortal, you pre-order WoW, 200 IQ, but you could make a change, man. Listen. No, I can't. No, I fucking can't. And, and that's what's so sad. Alternatively, you could choose to not, okay? You could choose mm -hmm. to accept Asmund's point of view and mentality, or you could reject that Doomer uh, mindset and accept that one person or a lot of people can make a difference and not be a pussy about it and not just fucking take Blizzard's fucking fat cock up your ass every fucking year, every fucking expansion, every pre-order. <sighs> oh, man. Just accept your voice doesn't matter. It's just, it's so sad because people they have... They believe so strongly about this, and they, they're they so idealistic. And it's like, McConnell, man, what, how many times we pour salt on our head for a storm mount? They still keep making storm mounts, man. Fuck you. Am I wrong? You should do it again. You should do it more. What, you pour, pour more, salt, more salt on my head? More salt. Jesus. That's what the world needs. It needs more salt. More fucking conviction. More principles. Does the fact that devs haven't talked given updates is just a cash grab? They all aren't going to support. How bonus attribute rolls. Bonus sneak peek on nail biting immortal vault defense. Blizzard only made Diablo immortal to pay for all the lawsuits. <laughs> oh no, man. Why bother when changing gambling? Because I don't believe. Okay, all right, you, that's actually a good question. The reason why is because I don't believe that people have self-control. I think that people are self-indulgent, lazy, selfish, self-serving, short-sighted animals. So if you ever give a person an opportunity to work against their own best interest, they will do it. Whenever I wanted to do something bad in my guild that was bad for most people but good for me, I'd put it to a vote. Because I can always convince people to vote against themselves. Every single time. And they'll do it every single fucking time. And it's what would work every time, guys. It's just perfect description. Yes. And I, I, I don't think that it works. Like, I, I don't think so at all. People don't follow Dharma. It's a problem. Like you said earlier, nobody's going to do something about it, then why why not you do it? You can do it. Make a change in gaming. You can. Listen. <laughs> you've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. How can I get people right? to stop pre-orders? Listen, you're How already on you're already on the path just by the opportunity to talk to a senator about fucking loot boxes. True. If someone like you, someone that fucking uh, an absolute fucking degenerate, okay? Someone like you can put yourself in a position, okay? From the bottom, you were at the bottom of the fucking barrel, okay? You were at the very fucking bottom six, seven years ago, mm -hmm. okay? You worked your way out, and now look at your position. You were yep. one person, okay? Mm -hmm. So people in chat should look at that. Yep. And take that to heart. If Asmund can work his way up from being a bottom of the barrel cockroach to the king he is now, fucking anybody can do it. You just have to fucking put yourself out there and fucking make some moves. And have. And actually understand what principles are. The difference well, have is. A, have, a, have a set of core values. Name, For fuck's sake, man. name one change that we've made on a large scale that happened without, like, with just us. Like, what one change? Bro, I'm saying that you have the opportunity to do something. We cannot stop people pre-ordering. We can't stop them pre-ordering. Like, it's not going to happen. Like, I understand. I don't agree. With you. I don't agree. I don't agree. And I think slash spit, spit they got yeah, rid of spit. it. They just deleted yeah, the emote. But spitting on people was having an effect. Yeah, but they, yeah, they just deleted it. Jesus Christ! So one, but, so the the one example you asked for, you just say you just write it off. 
Well, because no, Blizzard I don't write it off. I'm saying that it was it, it was ultimately inconsequential. It what? It wasn't. Yes. If they had to remove the emote because it affected their bottom line, what do you? What does that say? It says that it was fucking working. But it didn't matter because they got rid of it. Oh my god. The effect, the outcome so, was the same. You're such a fucking doomer, dude. I'm not a doomer. I'm just you being are. realistic. You're a fucking nihilistic doomer. I don't subscribe to your mentality at all. I Yeah, Period. but you, didn't, you don't have to subscribe to it to know that I'm right. You think you're right. I think I you're do. wrong. I do. I do think I'm right. Do not pre-order games, okay? Do not pre-order games. Uh, that that's it. Unless unless you you want to make Bobby make sure he gets another yacht.